Hi, Anthony Parent here, and here we are, part seven of our 2014 Guide to IRS Offshore Voluntary Disclosure. And uh, I haven't had any updates in a while. We've been really busy with uh, a lot of the, the disclosures we've uh, submitted so far and working a lot of the opt-out. So I finally had some time to update with this important topic. Um, and just a little bit about us. Uh, we are IRS medic, parent and parent. We are actually tax resolution attorneys. We charge a flat fee. Okay, I want to talk about one of the first things, and this is something that has changed, um, or the, not necessarily changed, but the IRS never mentioned this. You know, if you're going to opt out, you have you can't just submit and say, "Hey, I'm going to opt out." You actually have to go through the process as if you're not going to, as if you're going through and going to accept the standard penalty amount. It just doesn't matter. Um, so you have to go all the way, and what's going to happen is you're going to have an uh, offshore examiner who's just going to examine your offshore income and put that in based off your amended returns and your bank statements, and there might be some back and forth about what income is what. So it's important to know, don't get kicked out um, of the program. Um, if you get kicked out, you'll be under audited under the standard rules. Uh, we haven't had any of, any of those uh, happen yet. Uh, we've saved a bunch uh, from previous attorneys. So just make sure um, you don't get kicked out. Uh, we haven't had any experience. I'm sure at some point we will, um, what the uh, FBAR pen penalties will look like. Um, now, what is an opt-out? Well, okay, let's just, uh, you're not opting out. This is what we say. Uh, every day, many times, you're not opting out of the voluntary disclosure pro program. You're opting out of what we call the standard penalty on account value, and that's the five percent for very few people, twelve and a half if it's under seventy-five, and twenty-seven and a half percent if it's over seventy-five thousand dollars. That is what you're opting out of. You're saying that is not fair based on my circumstances to pay. Okay, and so this is the way to think about it. Okay. Assume you're audited. Let's say that you weren't in the program. You never found out that you actually had to file, file an FBAR, and some IRS agent came and saw that you had these unreported accounts. What do you think you should be penalized? Right? And you didn't know. Now, should you be assessed a willful penalty that's 50% uh, of account value, um, or should it be something smaller? Okay. Now, there's a lot of people who shouldn't be assessed heavy FBAR penalties when they're audited. Now this is the other. This is what you have. You're your ace in the hole. Okay. Um, when you opt out, see you're you're always in compliance. Otherwise, that the only time you were in compliance was this act, but you even went through the program. You came clean, so you're better. You know you're in a better position than someone who was audited and is trying to argue um, that no penalties be assessed. You came through through their you know rather onerous uh, program. Um, to argue that no penalties or limited penalties should be applied. Now, this is something we've seen. Um, there's people who, um, we've had clients who see this letter. Uh, once we opt out, the IRS uh, um, examiner will send a letter saying, if you opt out, it's irrevocable. Well, we said, good. We want it to be irrevocable because we want to opt out. Sometimes it scares people um, that they just, they, they get nervous about it. Um, and then sometimes the revenue agents will even say, don't do it. You're not going to opt out. You're not going to opt out. Now, why do they do this? Well, I'll just politely say ignorance. Um, once you opt out, you won't be dealing with that um, OVDI examiner uh, anymore. There are some rare cases that we have seen where it's the same person, but that person has to be at a high level, a higher level than your typical OVDP examiner. Um, and the, the people at the higher level understand what is a realistic FBAR penalty assessment because it's only the higher level examiner that will be the one who has to actually talk with district counsel, one of the IRS's own attorneys, and I'll explain why that uh, why that's necessary. Um, they actually have to talk with someone, um, an attorney, to say what are they going to assess. So don't let anyone scare. You. If you got great opt out facts, opt out. Works great. It really can save you a lot of money. Um, so let's just say what could happen. Okay. The best case is a warning letter. That means you get a 0% penalty, nothing at all. Not bad is a non-willful. Um, and we've had clients pay um, non-willful penalties and be very, very happy uh, with that result. Um, as a non-willful penalty, there's some guidelines about where you should be, depending on the nature of the offense. 
Um, we've had clients, you know, a few years of non-willful $10,000 penalties on super high account values um, that when they're looking at the standard penalty of, you know, a standard penalty of half a million dollars versus, you know, $40,000, that's, that's quite a significant win. Um, and that they did not have all the facts on their side here. You know, when you're non-willful, you're getting, it's like you probably should have known something, but does it make sense to ruin you completely because you made a mistake? Because look, everyone ma makes mistakes on their taxes, you know, and everybody has, you know, there's the degrees. Um, so even if you did do something, um, had a little bit of knowledge, um, you can look for non-willful just to lower it. Now, the bad result is a willful penalty. And as I was discussing, um, it's really hard for them to go for those willful penalties. Um, why? Well, let's think about the process here. And it's a little bit different. All right, FR penalties are Title 31 penalties. Okay, Title 31 is where it comes in the U.S. Code. Your tax is your Title 26. Okay, Tw Title 26 is what the IRS has complete control over. <laughs> now... Title 31, if you watch these other ones, you know this. You, you know this, that Title 31 is typically just the Treasury Department, but the Treasury Department doesn't have the administrators to collect and assess FR penalties, so they went and it gave that authority to the IRS. However, that can't undo the fact that Title 31 penalties are not tax penalties, and the IRS cannot easily collect on them. So what has to happen is some attorney from the Treasury must sue someone who they have no criminal leverage over in federal district court in order to collect FBAR penalties. Remember how I said that advanced um, uh, examiner will talk to district counsel to say, okay, what are we going to do? Well, district counsel is going to look at the case and say, all right, let's take a look at the, the facts of this case. Here's someone, again, no criminal leverage. When you look at all the press releases of people who've been assessed huge FBAR penalties, you know, you see... You know, with one ex one exception I can think of that was you know really a horrible result. I'm referring to McBride. Um, in most cases, they had nothing. They had no opportunity um, uh, to, or, or they they had the ability to to put the criminal charges over someone's head. But in a case like this, look, you're in the program. Remember what I said? You're not opting out of the whole program. Just a standard penalty structure. You're opting out, so you still have the same criminal protections. So they can't just threaten to come and arrest you for not paying these fines. So they don't have that at all. And now they're going to have to go to a federal district court, get a jury to agree that, you know, assessing 50%, 100%, 200% of whatever for a form the jury is not going to hear about. The jury's not going to know this. You're just learning about it relatively soon. You think the jury's going to know what this is? So... And if it's something where the account, it's a lot of money, well, you have an incentive to lawyer up pretty well. Um, so that's sort of their cost and benefit they're going for is why bother going for a battle where they don't have the facts on their side. It's just not a good landscape for them. And that's really the, that's the advantage of the offshore program is that you're changing the landscape in your favor by voluntary and coming clean. If you don't, look, you're just gambling on, you know, look, you might get away with it, but you're just gambling that they don't catch you. And if they catch you, they have everything in their favor. Um, and that's really the advantage to come and clean. So I hope you see why the bad is unlikely. Because it's not like they can just send you a bill, okay, pay it, and you don't pay it, they seize your, they have to seize your um, bank accounts and do whatever, you know, mean and nasty things they like to do. No, they actually have to sue you in court. And get a jury to agree with them, right? Seems like they they got better things to do than that.